Welcome to worship. I'm Cody Anderson, the associate pastor here at Parker United Methodist Church, and we are so glad to be worshiping with you today. I will be your online pastor, so I want to invite you to go over to umcparker.online.church. That's where our online community gathers together as we worship um, online. So all you have to do is go over to that site. You're going to sign in using the left top of your screen. You'll see a little hamburger menu or three lines. Go ahead and click on that to sign in. That allows you access to be able to be in community with each other as we worship together. You'll be able to share prayer concerns, be able to talk with others who are worshiping online, and be able to get connected in a new way. We pray that this worship service will be a meaningful one for you that will remind you that you are a beloved child of God and will help you go into your week to share that love with others. We'll see you in a few minutes. Good morning, Susan. You know what I've been pondering? I'm perplexed. What have you been pondering? I've been pondering where to purchase peaches and pears for multiple purposes, like pastries and pies. Where do you prefer to purchase your peaches and pears? Well, I prefer to purchase Palisade peaches and pears. They're perfect for pur purposes like pastries and pies. You can purchase them now from the Parker Rotary Club. The Parker Rotary Club is selling Palisade peaches and pears? That's perfect. Perfect is right. To place your order, proceed to the website of the Parker Rotary Club. That's parkerrotary.org. There you can point and click on the link to place your order and pay with a credit card. What about proceeds and profits? I prefer that a portion go to a praiseworthy cause. Your priorities are pitch perfect. When you place your order, you can specify that a portion of the proceeds go to Parker UMC, precisely $5 per purchase. That's superb. I'll definitely purchase my Palisade Peaches and Pears from the Parker Rotary Club. Pray tell, when and where can I pick up my Peaches and Pears? You can pick up your Palisade Peaches and Pears on Saturday, August 27th from 1 to 3 p.m. They'll be positioned at the Planet Fitness parking lot in Parker. That's the southwest corner of Parker Road and Main Street. That's splendid. Thank you, Susan, for providing me info on where to purchase Palisade Peaches and Pears Please tell the people at Parker Rotary we're pleased with the plan to split the profits. Have a superb day. They know how to follow the p -p -p sounds. If you didn't catch it, all those were were words that were had peaches and pears and perfects and. Parker and pff, pff, yeah. Are you guys awake? Good morning. It is so good to be worshiping with you today. I am Cody Anderson. I'm the associate pastor here, and it is such a delight to be able to worship with you on this last Sunday of July. I want to say a special hello to those of you who are joining us online. We are so blessed to have you with us, and just want to remind you, I will be your online pastor today, and would love for you to head on over to umcparker.online.church where our community is gathering. You can sign in and start with the conversations there, and I'll be joining you in just a few minutes. And whether you are a guest online or here in our sanctuary, we are so blessed to have you here worshiping with us. We would love to be able to connect with you today after worship, so if you get a chance, just grab myself or Laura, and we would love to be able to get your information, get to know a little bit about you, and see the ways that we might be able to get you connected. Um, if you're online, you can put that in the chat, um, your information, or you can email me, Cody, at parkerumc.org. Well, make sure to get your name tags if you are here worshiping with us. This helps us all get to know each other. I was just talking with somebody and they said, there are so many new faces here. So we would love for you to wear a name tag, help get connected with each other, as well as Laura and Anne-Marie. 
Well, today at four here in our sanctuary, we are continuing our summer concert series by hosting the Forte Handbells. This group of musicians bring us special energy and share their deep love of God through music. So come and enjoy this amazing performance. And make sure to invite someone to come and join the fun. Next Sunday is an invite Sunday. Did y'all hear that? I would love for this place to be completely full next Sunday. That means next Sunday is the perfect time to invite your neighbors, your friends, your coworkers, anyone you can think of to come to our fun fest. So we have flyers like this right outside of the sanctuary doors or on the table that has name tags for you to be able to make so that you can grab one of these and use it as an invitation. Um, Next week, we are starting with worship at 9.30 as we bless our students, our teachers and administrators, and our families with blessings of the back, or blessing of the backpacks. So if you are a student or you're bringing your student, have them bring their backpacks so we can pray a blessing over them for this next school year. And then after worship, starting around 11, we're having a huge party, barbecue, food, Kona ice, um, foam, inflatable slides, football toss, live music, fun, and connection. So if you bring a guest to me next Sunday, either at worship or at the Fun Fest, I have 10 gift cards that I am giving away. And when they are gone, then they are gone. So invite, get a gift card, and come enjoy this fun. Speaking of next Sunday, we are starting a new worship series next Sunday. One of our summer favorites, Parker UMC Goes to the Movies. This year, we are reflecting on five Pixar movies, starting with Toy Story next Sunday. So you can bring a friend and have a friend in me. That was a big stretch, I know, but thank you. Um, this series is a great way to invite friends, new people to come into worship. So spread the word. Watch Toy Story this week as we prepare for next Sunday. Well, today we are blessed to have Dan O'Neill lead us in worship. As we come into this time today, let us ask the Holy Spirit to speak to us, calling us to go and to share love and goodness. And let us be open to God's voice as we prepare to be agents of hope and love in this world. Will you stand now, if you're able, and let us join in our call to worship. We are called to love the Lord our God. With all our heart and soul. We are called to love the Lord our God. With all of our mind and strength. We are called to love the Lord our God. With all that we are to love our neighbors as ourselves. Love, help us love like you. And now let us join together in singing our opening song, Hesu Hesu.
And please be seated now as we join our hearts and our voices together in our unison prayer. Our hope is in you, O Lord. We are part of your kingdom here on earth, called to love you and to love our neighbors. May we bear the fruits of your grace, peace, and kindness in your world. Help us to grow in faith as we understand your grace and share it with others. We offer ourselves this day, seeking to live lives worthy of you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, I'd like to invite the kids to come up at this time and join me up here for children's time. You get one more week with me and then Miss Noel's back next Sunday. Come on up. It is good to see you all. Well, I have with me a backpack. How many of you guys are getting ready for school? Yeah? 
All right, we're going to fill this backpack today of all the things that we might need for school. I've got some stuff in here, all right? So what is something we might need for school? Lunchbox. Oh, man, I don't have a lunchbox in here. <laughs> of course I don't. I'll slip some money in here for school lunch. How's that sound? Good. All right. Lunch is taken care of. What's next? What else do we need in here? Paper. Oh, my gosh. Paper. Right. I do have some paper. What else? What else do we need? Oh, pencils. Absolutely. Good job. What do we need? Glue. glue. How about glue sticks and also a bottle? Good. All right. Got the glue. What do you think, Connor? Markers. Markers, absolutely. I've got dry erase markers, and I've got regular washable markers. So we'll put both of those in. What else? Huh? Folders, absolutely. You need folders, so I've got some folders. And how about I put a binder in here just so that that way it's taken care of too. All right, what else? Okay, I've got a ruler and crayons. Woo, we're getting all packed up. Anything else? I've got, how about scissors? Yeah. yeah. I've got, I, I have some more paper because, you know, you have to have composition notebooks and all that. Okay. And let's see. Oh, here's something that I know our older kids need, Jackson. A planner, so you don't forget things. Um, how about some erasers? Okay, oh, there's some more markers. Um, notepads and uh, post-it notes, note cards, post-it notes. Almost done. How about a case? Yeah. Carry, yeah. One more thing. Oh my gosh, we need a water bottle, right? So if we're going to school, we need to have things ready to go. And then when we go to school, we're, we're ready to go and do what they're asking us to do, right? What do you think we need to pack if God is calling us to do something? If we're supposed to go do something, what do you think God wants us to pack? Who knows, right? Yeah, that's a question that the disciples asked. And Jesus said, no, leave everything and come follow me. Leave everything. Leave your water bottle. Leave your lunch. Leave the paper. Leave the markers. Leave the scissors. And just come follow me. Because what God needs us to pack is stuff that we can't actually put in a backpack, right? We need to pack listening ears so we can. God's voice and hear the voice of people who are hurting. We need to pack our eyesight to be able to see the needs around us. We need to be able to pack kindness and compassion and goodness and love so that we can take that with us. So when you guys are packing your backpacks, when you guys are bringing backpacks here for those kids who are in need, and I just gave you all a huge list of things you can bring. But there's a list at Noel's desk if you want one. When you're packing up, I want you guys to think about what do I need to pack up to go with God? And those things that I just said, ears, eyes, that heart of love, those are the things I want you to also pack up as you go out into the world. Sound good? Yeah. All right, let's pray. Oh God, we thank you for the ways in which you call us to go. And sometimes we don't feel prepared, but help us remember that you call us to go and all we need are those tools that you have given us inside. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. All right, guys, hey, if you invite a friend next week and you come see me, that gift card is for you too, okay? Sound good? Next Sunday. Next Sunday. I love it, William. All right. All right, your teachers are right back there, so you guys go on back. One of the advantages of sitting up here is to see the faces. When Cody was talking about Fun Fest and the foam machine, all the kids' eyes lit up. For those who were here last year, I invite you back again. And for those who were not here last year, 
you got to come to see the foam machine. It is such a hoot. It is fun. But let us now turn to Scripture. This morning's Scripture is from the 10th chapter of Luke, the first 12 verses. Be still now and be present with the word of the Lord. After this, the Lord appointed 70 others and sent them on ahead of him in pairs to every town and place where he himself intended to go. He said to them, the harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Therefore, ask the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into his harvest. Go on your way. See, I am sending you out like lambs into the midst of wolves. Carry no purse, no bag, no sandals, and greet no one on the road. Whatever house you enter, first say, peace to this house. And if anyone is there who shares in peace, your peace will rest on that person. But if not, it will return to you. Remain in the same house, eating and drinking whatever they provide, for the laborer deserves to be paid. Do not move about from house to house. Whenever you enter a town and its people welcome you, eat what is set before you. Cure the sick who are there and say to them, the kingdom of God has come near to you. But whenever you enter a town and they do not welcome you, go out into its streets and say, even the dust of your town that clings to our feet, we wipe off in protest against you. Yet know this, the kingdom of God has come near. I tell you on that day it will be more tolerable for Sodom than for that town. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. I invite you now to enter into a time of prayer with me. Creator God, we are gathered together, Lord, both here in person and electronically. Some of us are looking for comfort, some for answers, some for fellowship, and perhaps some gather simply out of habit. But whatever our reasons, take hold of us this morning. Focus our attention. Grab us and shake us a little. Let us know that you are here with us. Help us to see the good things you continually set before us, the crisp beauty of a Colorado morning, the smiles and laughter on the faces of friends and family, a warm handshake and a happy hug, an evening meal. And as we experience these and so many more wonders, remind us to be thankful. Help us to understand the challenges and disappointments that come our way job difficulties, family disagreements, society's discord. And as we encounter these and so many more experiences, remind us again to be thankful. Thankful that we have that job, love that family, and live in an age that continues to grow and develop. Be with us when we run into those problems that we cannot handle on our own. Some of us are surrounded by struggles with our children, some with the realities of our old age. Some of us encounter our own health issues while others deal with the failing health of others around us. Some face financial strain while others have just or are about to relocate and face living into a new town and navigating new friendships. In all of these joys, these challenges and life's seemingly insurmountable problems remind us that you are here. Strengthen us, calm us, settle us down, and cheer us up. We ask that you also be with others in our local community, in our country, and around the globe that need your grace and presence. Be with the abused in Parker, the hungry in Chicago, the flood victims in our country's middle, the frightened in Ukraine, the drought-stricken in Ethiopia, the undereducated in Nigeria, the imprisoned in so many parts of the world. Be with those who know the story of your son and be with those who have not yet heard it. Help us to hear your call 
to become one of your laborers. We ask you to help us understand that if thy will is to be done here on earth, we must each individually be the ones who do it. And as we pray together Jesus' great prayer, guide us this morning as we try to not just recite the words, but to embrace them. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Your gifts to the church, whether here on Sunday, online during the week, online during the worship service itself, are greatly, greatly appreciated. They help the church bring forward programs like the Fun Fest to do the kickoff fall routines that churches go through to become part of the next year's programmatic year. Those gifts are appreciated. And as we go through the breakthrough prayer this morning, think about what gifts you provide that can give this church new opportunities and that new life and that new power we talk about. So as the ushers come forward and as you offer your gifts, what is it that you can imagine for the life of Parker UMC as we pray together? Oh God, break through our lives and Parker UMC with new opportunities, new life, and new power to do far more than we could ever imagine. Amen.
And please be seated. I'm just going to push that a little bit because it looks like it's going to fall off. And I don't want everybody running to the front trying to catch the money before we count it. I know how it is. Well, in case you um, don't know me, I am Laura. I'm one of the pastors here at Parker United Methodist Church, and it is good to be here this morning. And in a minute, I'm going to ask you, I, I try to pray before I preach. I especially need it today. Because I feel like what am I going to add to both the pastoral prayer that Dan preached, to the message that Cody offered for the kids that I hope you were all paying attention to it, as well as to our wonderful choir and our wonderful special music. Um, I feel like we've already been worshipped up. We could all leave now. What do you think? No. Anyway, with that, would you pray with and for me? Gracious and loving God, speak to us today. Guide our thoughts, our minds, our spirits. Open us up for what message you have breaking through into our lives so that we might be broken and poured out into your world. Amen. Well, we are wrapping up our first sermon series since I have been here. Throughout July, we have talked about callings. God calls us. We began by asking, how do you hear God? How do you listen to God? How do you know God is speaking to you? I hope many of you had a chance to kind of put yourself in that place, whether it's out in nature, it's in a, a prayerful attitude, or even with other people where you can feel like God may be giving you a message. And we also asked, how do we open ourselves up to receive it? Or as Pastor Cody said last week, how do we answer the phone when God calls instead of letting it ring to voicemail? You ever feel like you do that? Maybe God's calling. No, I'm just going to put it to voicemail and I'll check it later. Kind of like all those robocalls that I know I really don't want to find out what they're trying to sell me. So today we're going to go with how do we respond after we've listened, after we've processed, after we've recognized that God does call us. But then God calls us to go. Many times we think God calls us to go and do what? Uh, you know, like the empty bag. What am I supposed to pack in my bag to respond to God's call? I don't know. I don't know if I even want to go. Because I think deep down, I know it's for me. Maybe you're like me. We're worried that God's going to ask us to do something hard. Like, I remember doing a spiritual gift study one time. And there was a spiritual gift of poverty. I'm like, Lord, please no. I don't want the spiritual gift of poverty. I'm not the only one I know. But we think, I don't know if I could do what God, I, I don't want to be like Pastor Laura, Pastor Cody, and respond to God's call to ministry. Oh, I don't want to do that. And what other big thing might God be saying to us? And so we're afraid. But think about it in your own life. When have you been able to do something that you never imagined you could do. Maybe something bigger than you imagined you can do. The story that came to my mind as I was preparing for this was a time I did something I never thought I'd have to do and I wasn't prepared. You see, I'd gone out to lunch with somebody and we were at a restaurant and it was one of those Chinese buffet restaurants, you know, where you get as much food as you can for as much money as you can. And we were sitting there eating and the person across from me started choking. They couldn't breathe. And I could tell in their eyes that something was wrong. And so I yelled out, help, help, somebody help me. Nobody responded. And I thought to myself, this person I know is not breathing. Nobody's calling 911 for us. What do I need to do? And so they stood up and they did this. And so I'd never done this before. You know what the Heimlich maneuver is, right? So I went behind them and I grabbed and I squeezed really hard and nothing happened. My heart's still racing. My heart started racing. Uh-oh, what's going to happen? This person's going to die right in front of me. And so I squeezed again really hard. I didn't know what I was doing. I just seen it on TV. Or I've heard you're supposed to do this. I didn't know. I just squeezed really hard. The food fell out of their mouth. And we sat down. <laughs> I didn't need any more after that. <laughs> and there were three things that went through my mind. The first was, thank goodness it worked. They're here with us. The second thing was, 
Why didn't anybody answer me when I said, hello, I need help here? The place was filled with people. Nobody came to my, ha- my aid. Nobody came to that my friend's aid. What was that about? I got mad. But then I thought, the third thing, I can't believe I did that. Never been trained, seen it on TV. I may have read something like you're supposed to do this, but I'd never practiced like on a real person, but I did it. Never thought I would have to do that. I'm taking the online CPR course right now, um, along with some of our new staff with our little blessings, because the last time I took CPR course might have been when I was Emma's age, and I won't even tell you how many years that was. When's the last time you did something that you never thought you'd have to do, but yet you did it? Was God with me? I think so. Maybe the training kicked in. I don't know. I wasn't trained. But yet, God does call us at times to do things we'd never imagine, and it works out, or we learn from it. Our passage today that wraps up our calling sermon series is of Jesus calling 70. Some some say 70, some say 72 people, and sends them out into the world. We're going to talk about them in a minute, but I want to go back to, that's in Luke chapter 10. Luke chapter 9 begins with Jesus calling the 12 disciples to do the same thing. It's two stories with the same meaning, I guess you could say. Now, if I were to ask you, Imagine you were with Jesus. Who would be the first people that should sign up to do what Jesus said to do? It should be the ones that had the most theological training, right? Which would be the 12 disciples, right? Isn't that who you would assume? Dan agrees. I must be right. And we kind of put those 12 disciples on a little pedestal as if ooh, they were with Jesus. They were trained. They knew everything. But remember, most of them were fishers. Fishermen, fishers of people, fishers of fish. They weren't theologically trained. Jesus told them to leave everything you're doing, come and follow me. But yet he trained them. You know how he trained them? He threw them into the deep end and said, here, go and do this. And he gave them the same instructions that he gave these, disciples, these followers of Jesus in chapter 10, which is don't take anything with you. Just walk really quickly and and get that done. And by the way, the message that you're going to be telling people is the kingdom of God is near. And I'm also giving the authority to cast out demons and to heal people. Who's ready to sign up when when Cody and I put the sign out list that you're going to go out there. You're going to tell people the kingdom of God is near and you're going to cast out demons and heal people. Are you ready? I don't see a hand. That sounds crazy. I wonder if they thought it was crazy too. Even though that whole idea of the demons, that was more a, a thinking of 2,000 years ago. They thought that illnesses and, and other challenges were caused by demons. So we can set aside you know, what we think of it. But they, they did it. What, what also, it wraps up the end of chapter 9. As Jesus had been preaching and teaching, and it, as, as the time grew late... He said, all these people are hungry. Feed them. And what did his disciples say? We didn't sign up for to the potluck. We didn't ask people to bring food. There's not enough food to feed these thousands of people. And then what did Jesus ask them? Who has something? And, and a young boy said, I've got five loaves and two fish. Or is it two loaves and five fish? Does it matter? And what happened? Jesus blessed it, broke it, and fed everybody. Now, was it the the multiplying of the fish and the loaves, or was it the multiplication of everybody brought what they had, and then it was shared? And it's immediately after that scene, after these 12 disciples had gone out, had been preaching and the healing, and by the way, they came back and said, oh, we've been doing all these amazing things with your authority and your name. And then they still didn't quite get it when he asked them to feed people. And then it says, after these things, Jesus sent out the 70, sent out the 72, and gave them the same instructions. Go, travel from town to town. When you go into a place, I want you to say, peace be with you. And if the peace is returned, then that's the place for you. And if they don't return it, just keep walking. Evangelism? I don't know. 
And, and, and by the way, if you find that place that welcomes you, stay with them a while. Don't just go from house to house to house seeing who has the best buffet or the best food or the best, the best sheets or the best bedding, but stay with them. I think what's inherent is that build relationships with them. Get to know them. Let them get to know you and teach and preach and heal. But always the message is the kingdom of God has come near. And while you're there, receive their hospitality. Eat whatever they put in front of you and drink whatever they put in front of you. Who's ready to sign up for that? I can tell you I am not. My daughter can tell you I can be a little picky when it comes to my food and my drink. When I was a campus minister at the Wesley Foundation at the University of Wyoming, during the summers I would travel throughout Wyoming and I would offer to preach or to share a message with the churches, give the pastor a day off, or at least a day off from preaching even if they were there. And often I would stay at the pastor's house or a member of the church's house. Rarely did I stay in hotels because small town Wyoming, their hotels were not necessarily the ones I wanted to stay in. But yet it was about building those relationships and, and being able to be in somebody's house and to talk with them and to engage with them and develop some kind of relationship. But the biggest fear I had was what were they going to feed me? Because, number one, I don't eat mayonnaise <laughs> in any way, shape, or form. Okay, that's not exactly right. Blue cheese salad dressing where you can't taste the mayonnaise, I can do. But other than that, I don't do mayonnaise. Now, I grew up in the South where everything has mayonnaise. Working and growing up and, and serving churches in North Carolina was really rough. Especially macaroni salad. Blah. And, and to go with that, with potato salad, I don't do potato salad because of the mayonnaise and because I don't like deviled eggs. I don't like boiled eggs. I'll eat scrambled eggs, but it has to be really cooked. And so there's always that worry. Yeah, what are they going to feed me? I may or may not be allergic to eggplant, but I can tell you I don't get eggplant a lot when I visit people's homes. But I'm always worried, what are they going to feed me? Oh, and I don't drink coffee. I think I've already said that. What do you need to drink in the morning? I've got coffee. No, thank you. Just water, tepid water, cold water, hot water. I don't do caffeine after 9 o'clock in the morning. You can see the problem. And so I get anxious when I have to stay with people because I know how important hospitality is. Hospitality is important into this message, into this interaction with the followers of Jesus and the people they were staying with because it's through hospitality that we offer and we receive. Jesus said, don't put that block, that barrier, that, well, I'll accept this but not that because that's not really true hospitality. And so I worry, Lord, what you, will you call me to do? Because I can't eat macaroni salad. <laughs> Except as we were driving today, I thought, that comes from a place of privilege, doesn't it? Have I ever been hungry enough to eat macaroni salad even when I don't like it? It's been a long time. So the disciples were called to go, to not carry their shoes, not carry their backpack, not to carry all those provisions, but they were to rely on other people to give them what they needed. That's following Jesus. And the message they taught, yes, they healed. Yes, they cast out demons. But they developed those relationships saying, the kingdom of God has come near. Are they saying that Jesus embodies the kingdom of God and that he has come near? And so they're preparing a way for them to understand that Jesus is the, is the son of God. And knowing what we know the rest of the story, that Jesus will die and be raised from the dead and everything will be different. Were they preparing for that? Maybe. But I wonder... If the kingdom of God has come near, is in that table fellowship, is in those relationships that are made around the table, in their homes, talking into the wee hours of the night or waking up in the morning and figuring out what they need to get going. Is that where the kingdom of God comes near? 
is in those relationships. Is that what Jesus was getting at when he sent out the 70 to go out into the world, not just because they needed a doctor, but they needed to see what right relationship with God looked like. Truly welcoming, truly embracing, truly coming together in a new way. And then what happened? How did the disciples respond? I remembered. Let's read the, fo- the next passage. I hope you got it because it might be on my iPad. I don't know if it is. Luke chapter 10, verses 16 through 20. And this is the disciples when they come back. They said, we did all these amazing things. We did all these amazing things, Jesus. They were so excited. And Jesus said to them, whoever listens to you listens to me. That kingdom of God has drawn near. And whoever rejects you rejects me. And whoever rejects me rejects the one who sent me. Jesus is teaching new relationships with the people, but especially with his followers. So the 70 returned with joy saying, Lord, in your name, even the demons submit to us. And he said to them, I watched Satan fall from heaven like a flash of lightning. See, I have given you authority to tread on snakes and scorpions. You should ask Pastor Cody about snakes. And over all the power of the enemy and nothing will hurt you. Nevertheless, do not rejoice at this, that the spirits submit to you, but rejoice that your names are written in heaven. Now, is this just talking about them earning their way into heaven? I don't think so. I think Jesus is saying, reframe it. You didn't just check off a box. Yes, we visited. Yes, we healed. Yes, we cast out demons. But he said, I think your names are written in heaven means you are doing the work that God has sent you to do. You are doing the work that I have asked you to do, which is to go. Don't rely on what you think is in your backpack, but rely on me. Rely on my spirit. Rely on the message that we have to share, which is good news to the rest of the world. And that is where the kingdom of God comes near. When we share that, when we embrace it, and when we love like God calls us to love. But it is not easy to say, yes, Lord, I will follow you. Because we are worried. We're worried What's he going to ask me to do? What's God going to call me to do? What if I feel called to go out and invite all my friends to Fun Fest next week? Are you ready? And by the way, I may have a few extra gift cards to give. I don't know where it'll be, but I'll get you something. But when you bring your friends, when you bring your neighbors... You're you're saying, I have this amazing message to share, and this is a way I would like to introduce you to that, which is through foam. People go, well, that sounds like a weird church. Not snakes, not serpents, but foam and bouncy houses and Kona ice. Who doesn't want Kona ice? Can we do that? Well, okay, okay, Pastor Laura, okay, God, I can invite them to that, but can I invite them to churchy things? Because I, there are a lot of people, there are people in your lives you know, and they that might even be related to you that are like, I don't want anything to do with this church thing. There are a lot of people hurt by the church, historically and recently. There are a lot of reasons why people don't trust the church. They don't trust people like me. They don't trust people like you. And so it is really understandable to say, I'm not sure, God, that I can do this. But yet in that message, if they reject you, they're rejecting me. In other words, let God do the transformation. It is God that can soften hearts. As good Wesleyans, we believe in pervenient grace, God's grace working through us before we even know about God, before we even know about Jesus, before we even understand the idea of grace. We have to trust as followers of Jesus that Jesus is already there. Jesus has already gone before us. Jesus is already preparing. And all we are called to do is to share and to love and to offer and sometimes to eat macaroni salad pretend like we're drinking coffee, but to offer and to receive and to build relationships 
so that others might know of this amazing God who loves us, this amazing God who loves all people, this amazing God that does things that even surprise us, like calls us to do small things and calls us to sometimes do big things. How do you hear God calling you? I am so impressed with this church. As I've met people and starting to gather in small groups, some people have said, I heard what you said. I've heard what you and Pastor Cody have said, and I've been thinking about. You know what? It's not about me. But it's about opening ourselves up for what God may be calling us to do. How is God speaking to you? What is something that you're afraid God may be calling you to do? Think about that and share it with somebody else. Because the kingdom of God has come near, I think, is us offering, but it's also us going together. You see, Jesus didn't send the disciples. Jesus didn't send the 70 or the 72, by the way. It's all even numbers. He sent them two by two. Not like Noah's Ark. I was like, did that have to do with Noah's Ark? Probably not. But what does it mean to know that God sends us with one another? So that we're not by ourselves. So that we can encourage one another. We can share with one another. We can lift up one another. And we can sometimes cry with one another or experience rejection together. We do it together. There's a lot of reasons why people don't trust us. And there's a lot of reasons why people don't trust institutional religion or the church But I also think that's the one opportunity for us to gather, to learn, to encourage, and to support one another as disciples, called to follow Jesus. And yes, as apostles, called to go out into the world to share that message. But we don't have to do it alone. If there's somebody you want to share with, you already identified, please do that. If maybe it's a little more worrisome and you're not sure, feel free to speak with me or Pastor Cody. We'd be happy to listen to you. Because the kingdom of God has drawn near. It's in us, the body of Christ, redeemed by Christ, sent out into the world. This should be a communion Sunday. Filled with Christ's presence. Filled with the Holy Spirit ready to start and change that calendar to August as we begin a new school year, a new life. How might we start anew bearing the gospel message into the world? Let us pray. Holy God, we have heard you. Maybe we haven't always listened. Maybe we haven't really responded often. But yet, sometimes we feel that tap on the shoulder. Sometimes we feel that encouraging sense that something is new. Help us to hear you, O oh God, to listen. Help us to respond, even if it's taking baby steps, even if it's just talking to somebody new we never thought we'd talked to, or, or, or offering to do something in the church, or offering to do something in the community. It's just one step in responding to the love that you have poured into our lives. Gracious God, hear us when we're worried, when we're afraid. And help us to find somebody else to talk to, to to maybe do that work together. Because God, you have created us to be in community with you, with your son, with with the Holy Spirit. and And created us to be in community with one another. And so as we give thanks for this opportunity, we just pray that we might offer ourselves hands wide open. Hearts open to what you might call. And even our imaginations wide open to imagine That you might call us to something that seems really big, but maybe it begins with a small step. And we pray this in your son's name. Amen. Amen. I invite us to also to prepare to go out into the world as we stand and sing our closing song. I can never remember what it is. Freely, freely. We're going to offer ourselves freely to God.
It is good to be gathering today, whether here in our sanctuary or online. It's good to gather to hear God speaking to us through our words, through our songs, through our conversations. But it is also good to be inspired, to be encouraged, to get our backpacks ready, to take love, joy, peace, patience, and kindness and goodness out into the world because we have that message that we can give freely. So as we leave this place, may we know that the love of God, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit are with us now and always. Amen and amen. Thank you for tuning in and joining us for worship. Whether you watched live on Sunday or you're watching at some other time during the week, it's great to come together with each and every one of you, our online community. Remember, if you want to connect with classes, missions, or find yourself in need of prayer, please reach out to our pastoral staff. Their contact information is available on our website, www.parkerumc.org. May God's peace comfort you and give you strength.